Yesterday, the University of the Witwatersrand Wirtz released a statement announcing the appointment of lead professor and nuclear physicist Zeblon Villagazi as the 15th vice chancellor and principal of the institution. Professor Villagazi will take over in January uh, 2021 when current head Adam Habib leaves. Villagazi, who is the current vice principal and vice chancellor, joins us now via Skype. Uh, Prof, I suppose uh, congratulations are in order. Thank you, and good morning. Everybody. There's such excitement about your appointment. Your UJ counterpart, Chelizi Marwala, and another academic were making comparisons on social media about your age index, which is 92, and your 70 citation score with 325 publications under your belt. How important is your academic track record for the post you'll be stepping into? Thank you for that, obviously. Uh, Professor Marwala is a good friend of mine. Um, and I thank him for his support. I, I think, uh, Desiree, you know, being a vice chancellor is like being a CEO. You are the chief accounting officer of university. But beyond that, in the academic sphere, as a leader of thought leaders themselves, I mean, I'm leading uh, academics. So I must also demonstrate uh, with my academic track record, you know, the fact that I know how tough it is to do research and therefore when they face challenges i'll be able to, to relate to them so i think uh, a vice chancellor with what i would call a modest record like myself i hope that i'm able to inspire most importantly the next generation of uh, uh, young scholars uh, even the next generation of youngsters who are growing up in places like at home so to Mahuelereng, you know that you know uh someone who grew, who grew up in the 1970s uh, in Katla home can do research at a top laboratory in Geneva and become a vice chancellor of what I would call the premier institution on the African continent. You're talking about research under your leadership. Wirtz has uh, apparently reportedly produced more research output. Uh, the most urgent research currently is the response to COVID-19. Which areas uh, in South African society are in need of the kind of research Wirtz is busy with, a kind of impactful research? Yeah, thank you very much. Obviously, in terms of the increase in research, it wasn't, I mean, I just enabled it, you know, I just helped. It is the researchers themselves in laboratories, uh, at, uh, in classrooms and in spaces and facilities across universities that did the work. It was just as a leader, you kind of allow for that space to for creativity to flourish. I, I think that obviously, as you are aware, that a few days ago, some of our leading clinicians uh, and vaccinologists proposed uh, the first initial study of this test of this uh, uh, vaccine for COVID-19 uh, in partnership with Oxford and, and the, 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 the Lister Institute at Oxford. I think that's a pressing challenge and I think it talks about the university's responsiveness to a pressing challenge. You've got other social issues as well, like for example, the divisions that play themselves in society uh, and the inequality issues that are very, very pressing. In fact, COVID has showed us the urgency of South Africans and the world in general to deal and manage inequality. Uh, it takes place in various forms. You saw that with the issuing of uh, the, uh, that the responsiveness varied from school to school and from university to university. Even within my university, some students can afford free data. They've got Wi-Fi at home, uh, and they take that for granted. Once others don't have devices who are in the far-flung areas in townships and in informal settlements, who are just as talented, but don't have the resources in this era of online learning desert to have a fair chance of succeeding. So I think to me, inequality and how to deal with it is, is a key research question and something that we as a university must respond to. Others are, of course, innovation and technology, the fourth industrial revolution, are other areas of research that you should focus on. It's the perennial problem, inequality, isn't it? Now, education has been one of the most impacted sectors by COVID-19. Two things I want to ask you. How would you suggest the departments of basic and higher education move forward from the current stalemate uh, to how will technological changes impact your work at VETS and how, in terms of how you dispense your service, which is uh, the provision of education and research going forward? Yes, thank you. I mean, obviously, this cannot only be resolved uh, as we move towards this era of 
online blended learning, you know, a mixture of the two. I don't think that we'll go fully online. I think that, uh, yes, at the moment, COVID has forced us to both at private, both, sorry, both in the basic education sector and in the post-secondary school sector to resort to online learning, right, or remote learning. Uh, this is a, a stopgap measure. It's just a bridge. And going forward, obviously, it has taught us to learn how to manage uh, online learning. But I believe that we need a process where both of them are merged together, blending both online and, you know, um, in front of the lecture hall, whatever form of learning. Because what students learn at school is not just about the content. It's about interacting with others. You develop the social skills, the networks, and the society that you want of people of different backgrounds in terms of religion, in terms of race, in terms of language, to actually try to make better citizens that will, able, that will be able to solve problems our generation and generations previously have not solved. So therefore, learning is not about just content. It's about the environment where you find yourselves at. Second, in terms of partnerships, I think you can't just be done by the private sector or sorry, by, the, by the department alone, nor the universities or schools. It requires the private sector to step in to assist where they can with logistics and so on and so forth. So therefore, to me, it's an opportunity for, to, to think anew. COVID, yes, has given us challenges. First is a health challenge. Second is a societal challenge. But I think humanity over the last thousand, many thousand years of its evolution has, has been the most adaptable species. And I think now with this challenge that we face there, Zeri, we've got to adapt and we'll be able to. New forms of interaction, new forms of collaboration will emerge. So that's what we need to be aware of. So just in terms of the resumption of schools, what strategies would you suggest to the basic education and the higher education? <laughs> okay, I think that's a tough one. I'm not, I'm not able, I won't be able to respond to that. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, it is largely around, you know, uh, I mean, there is, of course, adverts, I'll use, I'll use adverts, for example, is that as we are beginning to phase in the return of students, we prioritize certain areas. We just didn't do it, you know, uh, randomly. We ensured that we deal with things like access to laboratories first, graduate students who actually can uh, have the, 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 with appropriate social distancing. And third, and most importantly, for residents, we ensure that actually we address issues of social justice. Because, you know, it is easy for my child, you know, to actually have access to resources that I take for granted. But for a, uh, a young person staying uh, in Dipslot or Lusikisiki and, you know, in other areas, uh, even in Soweto or Katlehong, they won't have data, they won't have the devices. And the environment at home, in any case, even if they have all that, doesn't allow them, doesn't allow for that, you know, in terms of living spaces and so on and so forth. So what you've done at, you know, at, at VET and, and it's been done in other universities as well, is to actually address social justice and prioritize those whose living conditions at home don't allow for a, a healthy learning environment. You touched a bit on this at the beginning of our conversation, but there's a, there's a broader conversation about authenticity and Ubuntu. Is there a place for these in, in, in verts uh, in terms of the future? And, it, you know, what has been your role here in terms of inculcating Ubuntu within Verts University? Because you, you're not coming in from the outside. You've been part of the fabric already. Yes, I think, um, obviously, I, I cannot... Uh, profess to solve all problems. I mean, these problems are not going to be addressed by one person alone that I spoke about earlier, the divisions and so on and so forth, and creating new values in the system that allows for us to care for each other, that allows us to work harder at what you do best, and for people to realize their talents. I mean, that's what the university and the space of learning is all about. I think there are three components. Is One, the infrastructure must be solid, that people must have a safe physical space. Secondly, it's the people the academics, the lecturers, the professional and support staff, the workers must feel that they belong to you know, they belong in the university. I do believe that someone who's a young worker who by circumstance of their birth or accident for that matter, do not have the appropriate qualification. Through these courses that we have, online and blended learning courses, I do see that person at some stage rising to become someone who earns a degree and improve their lives. 
That's the opportunity a learning space must afford, a place of possibility. Third, it is the issue of the values that the university must inculcate. Our human, our humaneness, our humanity. You know, the three to me are like hardware, software, and the operating system is Ubuntu. The operating system is the environment that allows diversity of views, tolerance, values of respect for different racial groups, religions, and so on and so forth, and backgrounds as well, and social class. Of course, we'll continue to have conversations with you at different uh, phases as you prepare to go in. But thank you so much and congratulations once again. Thank you. Professor Zeblon Villagaz is the incoming VETS Chancellor and Principal. And of course, we'll be watching to see how that tenure unfolds. You're watching the agenda. Let's take a break.